connects with one another. We thank you, Holy Spirit, that you're here to teach us. We know that you're the real teacher. And we thank you that you're opening your word up for us tonight. That it will illuminate, Father, us in every way. And we just want to thank you for your word, for it's forever settled in heaven. And may it always be settled in our hearts. And we just thank you for it now. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I think it was last Wednesday. It might have been Sunday. I don't know. We were talking about the grace of God. I want to talk a little bit about the grace of God. But I also want to talk a little bit about the law tonight. And uh, where does the law fit in? And um, I'm going to give you just some scriptures on the law. So let's put the first scripture up there. Acts 15.10. 15.10, and let's uh, evaluate the law and see what the Word of the Lord says about the law, and then we'll see what the Word of the Lord says about grace. Now then, why do you try to test God by putting a yoke on the necks of the disciples, such as neither our forefathers nor we ourselves were able to endure? Now, when you study that, and you will find out that the disciples went up to Jerusalem, Paul and uh, I think it was Barnabas, or one of the other uh, apostles, and had to settle the fact, you know, where does, the law, where does the law fit in here in our salvation? Are we saved by the law or are we saved by grace? Can't be saved by either, both of them. But I want you to see that as you read that, you'll find out he's talking about the law and about the different uh, 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 rituals and all the things that uh, uh, in 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 uh, the early church that the Jews was trying to bring over into Christianity, and notice what Paul is saying. Now then, why do you try to test God by putting a yoke? Now, what what is he talking about a yoke? Well, if you read that, you'll find out that it said, "Well, you can't be saved unless you're circumcised." Uh, you can't be saved unless you keep Moses' laws. And you read that chapter, you'll find that out, okay? So we find out that, that, it's a, that Paul said it's a yoke. It was a yoke upon the Jewish people. All right, let's, let's look at another scripture. Uh, Romans 3.20. All right, what good is the, the law? Well, we're going to find out here. Here's what the law, purpose of the law is right here. For no person will be justified, made righteous, acquitted, and judged acceptable in his sight by observing the works prescribed by the law. For the real function of the law is to make men recognize and be conscious of sin. So when you when you Look at the Ten Commandments, and, and we can see, well, wow, well, I say I didn't keep them all. So it makes man conscious of sin, and you'll find out that the law was given to the transgressors. Okay? <clears throat> all right, now get that in your mind. Not mere perception, but an acquaintance with sin, which works towards repentance, faith, and holy character. So when people are come in contact with the law, they realize, whoo, wow, I've fallen short of all of that. And they recognize, man, I'm really in, in a sinner. And then, and then they can reach out and receive God's grace and mercy and receive the sacrifice that Jesus did. All right, let's move on to another one here now. Look at Romans 4, uh, 14. Romans 4, 14. It, if it is the inheritance of the law who are to be the heirs, then faith is made futile and empty of all meaning, and the promise of God is made void, is annulled, and has no power. So Paul is talking about that, um, that you don't become heirs of God through, through the law. It's through grace. So as you read the various scriptures in the Bible, then you're able to see that uh, uh, it's not those that keep the law that are heirs of salvation. Okay, so let's go to the next one now and see another one. Let's go to the uh, Romans 5.20. 
And this is a good one. Romans 5.20. But the law came in only to expand and increase the trespass, making it more apparent and exciting opposition. But where sin increased and abound, grace, God's unmerited favor, has surpassed it and, in, and, <coughs> excuse me, and increased the more and superabundantly. So the law came in and we looked at it and we really saw, wow, we all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Because the Bible says if you offend in one point, guess what? You're guilty of them all. See? So you cannot be saved, but the law shows us what sin is. And for a lost person to see the Ten Commandments, it reveals to him he has sinned. And therefore, he can reach over here and receive salvation through Christ. So, where sin increased, grace increased more. That's God's mercy. That's God's loving kindness. All right, let's go to another one. Let's go to um, 6.14, Romans 6.14. All right. Is the Christian under the law? All right, we're going to find out in this next verse. For sin shall not <coughs> in any longer exert dominion over you. Now, who is you? That's us. Now, look at that. For sin shall not any longer exert dominion over you, since now you are not under the law as slaves, but under grace, as subjects of God's favor and mercy. So what happens is the law is there, but God killed the sinner. We died to the law when Christ died on the cross. We died with Christ, and therefore the law is still there for the sinners, but we that have accepted Christ died to the law. So look at that again. For sin shall not any longer exert dominion over you, since now you are not under the law as slaves, but under grace as subjects of God's favor and mercy. Oh, that's powerful. That's powerful. All right, let's look at another one. Romans 7, 1. Let's start with that 1 through 6. Do you not know, brother, for I am speaking to men who are acquainted with the law, that legal claim has power over a person only for as long as he is alive. Well, when did you die? <laughs> when Christ died, the old you died. So how can Sid have dominion over a dead man? So you got to see that your old life died. All right, turn to the next verse. For instance, a married woman is bound by law to her husband as long as he lives, but if her husband dies, she is loosed and discharged from the law concerning her husband. Next verse. And he's given that as an example, those that are under the law. Accordingly, she will be held an adulteress if she unites herself to another man who, while her husband lives. But if her husband dies... The marriage law no longer is built binding on her. She is free from that law. And if she's uh, united herself to another man, she is not an adulteress. Okay, that's an example under the law. That's uh, the picture that, that Paul gives. All right, go to the next verse. Likewise, my brother, you have undergone death. Now, he's talking to us. When did we... Over, when did we undergo death? Now, you've got to get that in your mind. When Christ died. When Christ died, we died. Okay? The law is still there, but we died to the law. Okay? Notice this. As to the law, or now, undergoing death as to the law through the crucified body of Christ. So that now you may belong to another, to him who was raised from the dead in order that we may bear fruit for God. So we have, if, if you are, 
it, it's, it's, it's spiritual, but trying to be good just don't work. See, you, you've just got to, got to realize that we have to live in the Spirit, walk in the Spirit. And as we walk in the Spirit, He directs us and guides us. We have now the lawgiver living in us. Okay? What would you rather have, the law or the lawgiver? Okay, the law cannot give us the power to overcome sin. So God kills the old man. That's why sin cannot have dominion over us. Oh, we can still sin, don't get me wrong, anytime we choose to, but it will not have dominion over you, okay? Um, you know yourself, if you sin, the Holy Spirit will deal with you. Is that true? That's the way it's always been in my life. Your conscience will bother you. You'll be miserable until you get right with God. That's the work of the Holy Spirit in us. So the law has been given now to the transgressors to show him that he is a sinner. All right, let's go a few more, a little bit more next verse. So this gets really good here now. When we were living in the flesh, mere physical lives, the sinful passion that were awakened and aroused up by what the law makes sin were constantly operating in our natural powers, in our bodily organs, in the sensitive appetites and wills of the flesh, so that we bore fruit for death. That's why it's so important to understand what happened at our, that, uh, in, in Romans 6, 6, 6, 11 to 6, 13. Knowing this, that our old man was crucified with Christ, therefore we died to sin. He did it for us. That's powerful. So you got to you got to accept that by faith. Now, don't try to feel it. Don't try to feel yourself into that. You accept it by faith, and the Holy Spirit, little by little, will make it alive to you more and more and more. Then in verse. Um, Six, that was verse 6, yeah, Romans 6, 6, 6, 11. Therefore you reckon yourself to be dead indeed unto sin. Everybody say, I reckon, I reckon. myself I dead I to sin, but alive unto God through Christ Jesus our Lord. So now you, you hold that in your mind and, and accept that by faith. Listen to this now. The Holy Spirit has the responsibility to make it alive to you. And little by little, you, you will see that whatever particular sin that might have had a grip on you as, you, as, as you're tempted by that, and you may fall a little here and a little there in that, you constantly say, no, I died with Christ. I reckon myself to be dead indeed under sin, but I'm alive unto God through Christ Jesus my Lord. Now, you've got to understand the Holy Spirit has the power to make that a, re a realization to you. How many have I lost so far? <laughs> Everybody's following me? Good. <clears throat> and, and, and this should be a way of life for us, okay? So, and then, the, now, there's a third step. 13, verse 13, Romans 6, 13. And do not yield your members as instruments of unrighteousness to that sin. So do not yield to it. So, because we know what you yield to becomes your master. See, So that's a process of sanctification that God has us in. And if you're tempted in a particular area, Hold that picture in your mind that you died with Christ 2,000 years ago. He did it for you. He put you in Christ. And when Christ died, you died. And all your sins was cast also upon Christ. And he has set us free from it. That's why sin will not have dominion over the Christian. Okay? Let's see, that was five, give me six. Is that, yeah, okay. But now we are discharged from the law. Everybody say, I'm discharged from the law. Okay. And have terminated all intercourse with it, 
having died to what once restrained and held us captive, so now we serve not under obedience to the old code or written regulations, but under obedience to the prompting of the Spirit in newness. Okay? So we died to the law, and now we're Christians, and the Holy Spirit lives in us. And the Holy Spirit directs us and guides us. If we do anything wrong, he lets us know. The lawgiver lives within us now. Okay? This is where so many times so many Christians get under condemnation is that they try to uh, keep the law. And they fail. So it's try and fail, try and fail, try and fail, and condemnation, condemnation, condemnation. So you've got to see this in the Spirit and, 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 and take it by faith and realize that, that God did it for us and we accept everything by faith. Everything is by faith. From beginning to end, it's by faith. Okay? Now, let me see what else have we got here. All right, turn to Romans 8, 2, and 3. Romans 8, 2, and 3. Then we're going to get on Greece. For the law of the spirit of life, now this is a law of life, which is in Christ Jesus. And remember now, we're in Christ Jesus. And the law of the spirit of life, which is in Christ Jesus, where we are, the law of our new being has freed me from the law of sin and of death. That life is the life of Christ. It, it, it's hard to explain, but it, it's something that, uh, it's like that want to. The, 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 the spirit of life causes us to want to please God. Uh, there's times we have failed and God has made provisions for that. And, and where is that found? Right, 1 John 1, 9. And, of course, when I first became a Christian, I really, I worked that one over real good. <laughs> but I thank God for, that is still available, and at times I still have to use it. Because um, it's not that I'm robbing banks or going out committing adultery or fornication, and shooting people, nothing like that. But, see, the closer we get to the light, which is God, the more that light reveals certain things in us that God wants to deliver us from. How many, how many see that? Okay? So that's one thing when you start walking close to God. His light is so bright. He'll show something up in your light that you didn't see before because you were way over here, but it was still God's grace. And then you're walking and, 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 and God's working in you and you're getting closer to God and the light's getting brighter and you begin to see things like attitudes. You used to didn't think having a bad attitude was a sin. But the Bible talks about attitudes. And so now we say, God, I need your help. I've got a bad attitude towards this person. That teacher of mine, I like that, you know, one, two, and a wham. Uh, always harping. It's a new joke that Willie told me tonight now. Did y'all hear about that? The new joke? Yeah, this, this band always um, called his wife Angel. And he'd always say, my wife, my angel, my angel, my angel. And this guy said, why do you call your wife Angel? And uh, he said, well, because she's always harping. <laughs> in the air, harp harping about something. Did I mess that one up good? <laughs> I tried that out on a congregation. Always harping about that. 
Now I might have to repent on that. Excuse me. <laughs> Thank you, Lord, for First John 1. Nine. Oh, I don't make light of it. I tell you, say you appreciate grace more. You appreciate grace more every day. Just like I said, uh, it was Sunday morning, you know, I woke up and things weren't too good for me. But anyway, here we go. All right. Mm, where's that? At? What verse is that? I can't even see it. Okay. For God has done what the law could not do. Its power being weakened by the flesh, the entire nature of man without the Holy Spirit. See, the, the Holy Spirit makes the whole thing different when a man becomes a Christian. It's more than just getting, hey, uh, I'm a Christian. Our bodies become the temple of the Holy Spirit. We have the Holy Spirit living in us. And notice what it says. The natural man does not have the Holy Spirit. When you're out there dealing with people, they're not Christians. They don't have the Holy Spirit. But we have the Holy Spirit who directs and guides us and lets us know if we're doing something wrong. Let me, let me say something. Don't, 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 uh, every once in a while we're to examine ourselves. The Bible tells us that. You, you taught us that. But don't go around constantly looking inside. <laughs> how many know what I'm talking about? If we, how many have done that? You know, yeah, Lord, I know there must be something wrong with me. <laughs> you know, and, and you're going to get, a, you're going to put yourself under condemnation and you're going to invite the devil to say, amen, amen, you're right, you got it. And you can never get rid of it because you ain't really got it because you think you got it. And, and you think, well, I'm just not too good here. And whew, I don't know what happened there. But anyway, uh, don't be introspecting all the time. Just relax and walk with God. He will let you know when you do something wrong. Now, that's the way it is with me. Then raise your hand if that's the way it's with you. Let's see. Raise your hand. Come on. All right. All right. Some of you getting there. All right. So you can relax in this thing. God loves you. Sin shall not have dominion over you. The Holy Spirit lives in you. He'll let you know if you're doing something wrong. All right, I got a question. If he lets you know that you're doing something wrong, what are you going to do about it? Harp? <laughs> Play your harp? <laughs> How many know what to do with it? First John 1, 9. Everybody say, First John 1, 9. See, oh, God's grace. Someone said, well, you just can't milk uh, 1 John 1, 9. Well, if you don't want to milk it, don't milk it. But I tell you, I got to milk it because I tell you, when I do something wrong, I say, Lord, forgive. How many of you know? Huh? I milked that baby, I tell you. I thank God for it. But see, as you, as you grow, then, then, then you... Then <laughs> Did I miss something? <laughs> It, it makes you when, you, when you start studying about God's grace, we've got to get on it because time's going by so fast. But you can't make it without God's grace. You can't be saved without God's grace. Well, the Bible says we're saved by grace through faith, not of works, lest any man should boast. It's God from beginning to end. From beginning to end. And so, remember, it should make us have a greater appreciation of God's love for us. We were undone, as undone as we could be, and God chose us and saved us, birthed us into the kingdom of God. Have you ever seen anybody try to work for the salvation? I've met a few folks that try to do that. I remember... I went to visit this man in the hospital, and he was Pentecostal background. I don't know if you know too much about their doctrine, but if you sin, you better get to the altar again and get reborn again. <laughs> That's why they're down there hollering all the time at the altar, see. It don't work that way. And I said, um, are you a Christian? He says, well, I used to be. And I thought, what do you mean you used to be? Well, I just, I just, couldn't, I just couldn't live up to it, the standards. I just couldn't live up to the law. And I, said, I knew where he was coming from. I said, listen, 
We're saved by grace through faith, not of works or you trying to keep all the commandments 24-7. Because somewhere you're going to slip, son. Well, that's my whole problem. I slip, I slip, I slip. And so I quit the whole nine yards. How many of you know his theology is all messed up? And I try to bring him back home to the Lord. He's saying, no, uh -uh. I've had enough. I've tried and failed. I've tried and failed. I give up. It can't be done. Because his, uh, his misunderstanding of, of what God did at Calvary for him, he thought he had to just be perfectionist all the time. And I think that uh, if you have that situation of per perfection uh, spirit, that, that it's, it's hard on you. Because if it ain't just right, you, you just lose your hair. Now, don't look at me. I'll, I lost that. How many, understand, how many perfectionists we have in here? Let's see your hands. One, two, you, you're somewhere along there. Okay. A little bit. It, it just drives you nuts. If, if, if it ain't just perfect, you can't stand it. And that's why you can't stand yourself sometimes. <laughs> But, but I'm saying that I'm, I've, I've, I've dealt with people like that. And it's, it's you, you, listen, it's not your perfection. It's his perfection. Amen. Come on, church. Don't, don't shout me down. And, 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 that, and yeah, well, won't I give, don't, won't I give people a license? Just do it. No, you, you don't, don't work that way. See, God lives in you. God lives in you, and as you learn to walk in the Spirit and obey Him, His prompting is there. He's prompting you. I love it. Boy, when you just, when you really get tuned up with God, and, and, and as you walk with God, and you just won't be introspecting yourself all the time, all the time, all the time. And so maybe you know what I'm talking about. All right, now, let's, um, did I finish that? All right, here we go. Let me read it again. For God has done what the law could not do, its power being weakened by the flesh. Nothing wrong with the law. The law is perfect. It's just the human flesh can't, do, can't accomplish anything that the law wants you to accomplish. So what did God do? The Holy Spirit, he sent, he, uh, without the Holy Spirit, it, the entire nature of man without the Holy Spirit sending his own son in the guise of sinful flesh and as an offering for sin, God condemned sin in the flesh, subdued, overcame, deprived it of its power over all who accept that sacrifice. No, oh, suck, that, suck that verse in. Whew. Wow, we need to camp out right there. Say God did it. Right. You don't have to worry about sin. Sin shall not have dominion over you. But Brother Bob, I said the other day, I've taught you how to handle it. Now handle it and let's get on with it. Amen? Amen. Simple, not complicated. And God's working in us. Remember the scripture in uh, Philippians 1, 6, for it is God in us that's working in us. And what is he doing? Making us willing to do his good pleasure. Powerful, powerful. I remember when, when Susan B. first got married, and that was a few years ago. God just did a great work in her. I, I've seen some people, when they're saved, it's like they're instant saints. Anybody ever met anybody like that? I mean, they just, you know, and, and I struggled all the way. I had to struggle to give up my cigars, struggle to give up my, my cigarettes, uh, quit spitting. Had to, I'd struggle, with, you know, give up my liquor, moonshine, my cursing. I remember when God was dealing with me, my cursing, I was working on this airplane and I couldn't get this nut on this boat. And, and I come down and I said, you and God, God said, son, we, we, uh, we ain't going to do that. And next time you, ju you just start blessing it. And uh, I said, okay, 
Lord, I bless you in Jesus' name. I got back up there, put it right on there, tighten that baby up. And I learned to bless people, bless my work. Sometimes we're working on the line more and it don't work out. I just close the garage down and walk off, go, go home, just go to the house, cool off. Say, Lord, I know you'll show me what's wrong with it later and go back out there, maybe the next day, and just like, how many's ever done that? Yeah, you do that, yeah. Amen. So, so I had to learn to, all these principles that I teach, I've gone through the course, and they work. So I teach them. Like I said, you don't have to know the whole Bible. That's fine. If you got the mind and if you can do it, fine. But there's certain principles you got to know and you got to put them in practice daily, 24 7. How many of you understand what I'm talking about? Okay, you don't step on nails. Never step on nails barefooted. Even if you got shoes on, don't do it. There's certain things you, that you just don't want to do. Now, let's, let's get on the side of grace here. Romans 1 5. Now, so we cleared, quit trying to keep the law, just obey the Holy Spirit, and guess what the result will be? You'll keep the law. <laughs> How many of you know we got one law? Did you know we got one law? Law of love. Yes, yeah, in Galatians, 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 Galatians. All right, look at that. It is through him that we have received grace. Everybody say, I got grace. grace. Where did you get it? Huh? From the Lord. Say, when you read the Bible, it says right there, through him, that is Christ, that we have received grace. God's unmerited favor. You can't do anything to earn it. I don't care how pretty you are. Good looking you are. Now, we ain't going to argue that, are we? <laughs> and our apostleship or to promote obedience to the faith and make disciples for his name's sake among all the nations. So that's the big job we have here at the Shield, that we're making disciples out of everybody. All the various things that you do. But notice this. It is through him that we have received grace. Another scripture I want you to turn to is Romans 5.17. Romans 5.17 uh, is powerful. For if because of one man's trespass, lapse, offense, death reign through that one, much more surely... Will those who receive God's overflowing grace. Now, who is that that has received this overflowing grace? Say, say, so you got overflowing grace coming to us. Unmerited favor. Okay? Now notice that word receive. Say, so talk to the Lord. Lord, I receive that overflowing grace right now, Lord. Unmerited favor and the free gift of righteousness. See, salvation is a gift. Righteousness is a gift. It's his righteousness, okay? Putting them into right standing with himself. Isn't that amazing? He put all of us in right standing with himself by what he did on the cross. Awesome. He did it all. Reign as kings in, in life with himself. Reign as kings in life through the one man, Jesus Christ, the Messiah, the anointed one. Now, to bring that down into practical terms each, one, each day, you have to, there's, like I say, certain scriptures you need to remember. And you need to, uh, for example, Lord, I thank you for the grace that you've already given me to make this day. And you have given me the gift of righteousness. So when the devil comes up and says, well, you're not righteous, you just say, well, I, I, I received the gift when I received Jesus, and he made me righteous with his righteousness. So just stick your tongue at, at the devil go, nye, 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 nye. <laughs> Go bother somebody else. They get tough with this thing, see. So we have overflowing grace. Now, we have the gift of righteousness. We have salvation. 
And we, get, and we have it because Christ paid the price for us. The Bible says that, that uh, when the sin, the soul that sins shall die. Well, you see, Jesus stepped right in there, and we should have died, but he died on our behalf. Man, that's God's grace all the way. Let's see how much grace you got. Let's see how much grace I got. Justine, you got three children. Would you die for any one of them? Isn't that amazing? Did you hear what she said? David, young man, got your daughter right there beside you. If I had a gun right here, and I said, uh, <laughs> I said, now, I'm going to shoot her, but I can spare her if somebody would volunteer to receive the bullet. Would you, do, would you do it? <laughs> Who said that? <laughs> oh, <okay. laughs> would you do it, Dave? Explain that to me. It, it, it's, it's awesome. And I, and I think all of us feel the same way. No greater love that a man can have than for a man to lay down his life for a friend. Now, Jesus did that for all of us. We'll have less fight in our lives with the devil and with our own selves and our own conscience if we really understand the fullness of this salvation that God has provided for us through Christ. Anybody hear me? Less struggles. It is done. It is finished. Sin shall not have dominion over us. Greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. The devil was whipped at Calvary. But see, he's full of deception, and he deceives people. And people are running around all the time hating themselves. I'll never be able to do this. I can't do that. And listen, just receive. Receive the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness that he gives. And get established in that. Get grounded in that. Things will fall off left and right. How many has ever noticed certain trees that the... the uh, the black oak is this way. Fall's coming and the leaves will start falling off. We'll be seeing them fall off. And finally winter is here and you look at the tree and just about a lot of the leaves have fallen off, but there's still some leaves that are holding on. How many have ever seen that? Have you, have you ever stopped and you see that? But you know, when spring comes and the new life comes, and goes up into those branches, it pushes those dead leaves right off. For the law of life in Christ Jesus has set us free from those leaves that keep hanging on to us. That new life, the life of Christ. And as we, as we feed our inner man, as we feed him the word of God, then that life becomes greater and greater in us. And a lot of these things that just have bugged us just fall off. There's, there's, it's like with me, uh, and then I'll use myself as an example. I'm younger than all of you, so I'll use myself as an example. <clears throat> there's things I can remember years ago that I struggled so hard to overcome. And there's like, I give up. And that's what God wanted me to do. Give up and start trusting him. Start trusting his word and what he says. And it's like, it's like, I have to think, I say, well, you know, wait, you know I don't do that no more. I can't, re I can't remember when I, I got the victory over it, but I know I didn't struggle to get the victory over it. 
I just got the victory over it. That's the work of the Holy Spirit. I love it. You can probably uh, remember things in your own life like that. As we move on in God, there's always going to be something that can bug you. How many know that? And, and I said last, I think it was Sunday, that we have to learn because sometimes it creates that anxiety in us, you know, and, and, and then you get irritable. And then you get cranky. And then you start harping. <laughs> you start playing your harp. <laughs> Is that the way it works with you? And, and say so you got to stop and you got to go back. Just I remember that, that that principle came alive to me with my kids and and I, and I would, I would, I said, now, this is, no, she's not, normally, she's not, something's, something's going on back here. What is the problem? And I remember my oldest daughter, and, and, uh, and she was afraid to go, go play, play uh, uh, baseball with, with, the, with the team. And I said, now, Wibby, that's not like her. And she was real nervous about it. No, I don't want to, I don't want to do that, Dad. See, I learned, uh oh, something happened out there. That, that caused her not to want to be out there with them. I mean, you understand what I'm talking about, see? So, finally we sat down, we talked with her, and then she told us the story that this, this girl came up in her face and wanted, wanted, to, wanted to punch her in the face. And she said, Dad, I could take that girl down like that. And I know Patsy could. Because we taught our girls, no, we trust God in these things. So we prayed about it, and as we prayed, laid hands on her, it released her of that fear. And so the next the time they had the, the game, she went out and played. And she was at the, at the uh, ballpark, and uh, the, the guy that run the place was, I knew him years ago, I went to school with him years ago. This girl come up to Patsy again, and I was all about to hit her like that. And, and this guy grabbed her hand and, and, and threw her off the, off the uh, team. And so Patsy told me about that. And we had prayed for about three weeks on this thing that God would show his glory in that. Anyway, a week later, the girl's father died. And Patsy was saddened about that. And I said, honey, no, it's not your fault. But after the girl's father passed away, a week later the girl came up and said, Patsy, I don't know why I did that. I'm so sorry for what I did. I didn't, will you forgive me? And Patsy says, yes, I forgive you. And they became the best of friends. We have seen God solemnly move in many situations, and it's scary sometimes, because when you decide to walk with God and to walk in the Spirit, not that we're perfect all the time, but God sees the heart, just like our sister said there in her message last Wednesday night. God sees our heart, and He, and he will move mountains for those whose heart is perfect towards Him, perfectly committed to Him, so, God's grace abounds. Paul had a problem. Paul had a problem. We know the problem he had was a, uh, a thorn in his flesh. Some people say it was sickness. It was not sickness. If you get into scriptures, we won't turn there. But it says it's a, it was a demonic power. How many has read that in the Bible? It, okay, it's not a sickness. It was a demonic power of buffering him, see. And if you go walk with God and you walk in it, and, and I've had the enemy buff me many a time, many a time. How many has ever had that? <laughs> See your hands. <laughs> yeah, that's okay. That just shows you, you you God's child. He don't mess with other folks. He just mess with it, trying to mess with God's children. But you know what God told him? He prayed three times, three times. And God says, my grace is sufficient. 
we, we, how do you see grace? See, there, there's, there's power. There's saving power in grace. For we are saved by grace. We are delivered by grace. We are kept by grace. See, we've got to see that, 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 that within grace. Now listen to this. Now, the scriptures that we won't turn there, but it's in Hebrews 10, 29. It says the spirit of grace. The spirit of grace. The Holy Spirit is the spirit of grace. We can go to the throne of grace. Sometimes I camp out there, by the way. <laughs> How many's ever camped out at the throne of grace? Yeah, you get enough pressure on you, you'll live there. That's right. God's word is the word of grace. Grace is God's bountiful supply of our every need. My grace is sufficient. Whatever you are struggling with right now, I want to remind you that God's grace is sufficient. And I say that by experience. I've had things in my life. I was like Paul. God, please take it away. And God would say, as he said to Paul, my grace is sufficient. And you learn that by experience and trusting in his grace. And it draws you closer and makes you appreciate his grace. Turn to Ephesians 2, 8 and 9, and we'll close here shortly. We'll, I want you to see this. For, for it is by free grace, God's unmerited favor, that you are saved, delivered from judgment. We will never be judged. I want you to listen to me. We will never be judged. I know there's a judgment seat of Christ that will be judged according to what we have done in these bodies. You hear that? But how many of you know Jesus took our judgment? Are you out there, church? He took our judgment. Look what it says. And made partakers of Christ's salvation through your works. Huh? Faith. Faith. And this salvation is not of yourselves, of your own doing. It came not through your own striving, so stop your striving. But it is the gift of God. Just rejoice in that. Just suck that in. Let the, let, just let that go through every fiber of your being. Just soak yourself in that. And, and when you wake up in the morning... You might be doing the jitterbug. I don't know. But a little trivet of music in here. See, that is what feeds your spirit. That is what makes you light inside. That is what you say, hallelujah. Some of, yeah, some of you are getting it. I tell you that now. You're getting it. All right. This is what it says. Go to the next verse. Not because of works. Not the fulfillment of the laws demands oh let's camp out right there we talked about the law didn't we not because of works not the fulfillment of the laws demands let's see the man should boast it is not the result of what anyone can possibly do so no one can pride themselves in it or take glory to himself it is God's grace, God's love for you and me. But I don't understand it. Don't try. Only God can illuminate your heart and mind. And when he does, that alone will give you unction to function for his glory. For the goodness of God, Romans 2, 4 leadeth us to repentance. Not him beating us over the head 24-7. God's grace. In fact, turn to the next verse. I like verse 10. Boy, that first 10 is a goodie. For we are God's own handiwork. Everybody say, I am, I am. 
God's own handiwork. Okay. His workmanship. Watch what you say about his workmanship. How many has been, been real good in, in putting yourself down besides me in, in your Christian life? Well, most all of us have. But stop that foolishness. Okay? Stop it right now. We're his workmanship. You ever, have, you, have you not seen the, the universe, how God formed the universe? Well, what is man that God is mindful of him? Why, well, he's given us authority and power to, to rule on this planet. And Adam sold out to, to Satan, but through Christ, now we can, we can go for it. Start ruling, start reigning. You have a fire day. Because we're in Christ and all authority has been given to him in heaven and earth. Look what it says. Recreated. We don't just change. It, it, it's not, you know, we say, it's a recreation in our spirit man. Recreated. Look what it says. Recreated in Christ Jesus, born anew. That we may do those good works which God preordained or predestined, planned beforehand for us, taking paths which he prepared ahead of time, that we should walk in them, living the good life which he prearranged and made ready for us to live. Amen. And I can, I've lived long enough that I can look back on Susan in my life now and, and, and see how God has brought us. Uh, he planned all of that, and we walked it out by faith. And I'm here tonight because we've walked that path that he planned for us all those years. Oh, yeah, we had our doubts along the way. We had our ups and downs and downs and ups. We did our part of it harping. But God did his work in us, you see. And realize that he recreated us. He, he's the one that the reason that we live and move and have our being is because of, of the president. No, because of him. Because of him. Somebody say, well, how long are you going to live, Bob? As long as God. I mean, I live and move and have my being because of him. As long as he's living, I'm going to be living. Now, I might not be here, but I'll be up there, but that's y'all's problem. <laughs> Somebody said, oh, we can't hardly wait. <laughs> All right. God gives us grace to give. You know, you've seen me give money away. You've never seen any other preacher do that, have you? No, okay. That, that's not to make you think I got a lot of money, but... When, when, this, uh, when this, the, 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 the spirit of giving, there's the spirit of grace that you just, there, there's something about giving somebody something. I, I saw Frank come down here and, and give Willie a dollar, I think, the other day. Was that a dollar? Who? No, <laughs> what? <laughs> Coming along good, Frank. Coming along. I saw you. I saw you give to that little kid back there. See, that was a blessed one. Just how many really enjoy giving? Let me see your hands. How many enjoy uh, getting? <laughs> that's okay. See, because as we as <laughs> that's a see, suck it in, son. Suck it in. <laughs> see, <laughs> as we get, we can give more. That's, not, that's how God wants it, you see. <laughs> Hallelujah. All right. Our talking should be full of grace. Always remember that. When you talk, let your talk be full of grace, God's grace. God loves you tonight. Sometimes I have a hard time, but God loves you tonight. 
No. When God's grace does that work in a man, you can't help from loving people. Did you hear what I just said? You don't have to struggle. It just flows out. Everything of the Holy Spirit flows. It just flows. You give because you want to. You give because the Spirit of grace is operating in you to give. And I tell you what, the Bible says give, and it'll be given unto you, pressed down, shake it together, shake it down, shake it, running over. Whew. How many found that to be true? Amen. I have. Amen. So God is so gracious to us. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for your grace. We thank you, Lord, for allowing us to die with Christ and, and set us free from the law. And we thank you, Father, that we are able to bless you and, and to keep your commandments because of the law of love operating in us and through us. And we just give you the praise and the glory. And I thank you so much for all your goodness and all your mercy and your grace and your loving kindness. In Jesus' name I pray.